In this video, I'm going to cover how to do a G meter based traction control with Holly EFI. It will require that you have active speed management enabled in your ECU. The only other thing required is a G meter. I'll show you how to set it up, how to use it, and then I will show a log on how it actually worked on a car at the track. So, this is the time based traction control that we sell for Holly EFI. As you can see, it looks a little different than your normal drive shaft curve. And that's because it's been repurposed to be a G meter based traction control. And I'm going to show you how I set that up. So, what we have is G meter versus time with timing retard and rev limit control. So, let me show you how we set that up. The first thing I did was set up an output. It's a PWM output, it's fixed, 1000 Hz, it's duty cycle. I used Excel G for the X axis and for the Y axis you can put anything really because we're only really using the, the one axis of the table. And then from there I took and created a duty cycle output that relates to the G. From there I created an input to read that back out and be able to be used in the traction control. So what we did is we took that output table and we took a wire in the ECU and looped that output to an input in the ECU and pin mapped them to these two in this input and this output. So this input is just a custom duty cycle low and it reads out the duty cycle from the G meter output PWM table that I created and converts it back into G. Now one thing I will say is when we did this and as you saw in the trash control tables or will see in the trash control tables uh, it doesn't show decimals so what I would suggest in the future if anyone else wants to try this and what we're doing is I would make them by a hundred so that the decimals don't show. So to repeat, if I were to do this again, I would do this from zero to 500 instead of zero to 5G. I would move the decimal place over two spots on the G so that it's easier to read in the trash control table. So once we set up the input and the output, we then change the dry shaft speed input for traction control to be G meter TC. Because it's a frequency speed input, we can use it in the traction control table instead of drive shaft. So the real takeaway from this whole video is you can repurpose the drive shaft traction control curve to whatever you want as long as it's a frequency or speed input. Now that we've done all that, this is the traction control table. You can see we have retard A, retard B. He is not using the rev limit on this one. You easily could. There's no reason you can't. He just chose not to. And you can see that retard A and retard B follow the line. And then we have retard A pulling no timing and retard B pulling 15 degrees for up to one and a half seconds. What that means is he's using retard A line as kind of a, I want to go this fast. And he's using retard B as I absolutely do not want to go faster than this. But he is okay with the G meter being anywhere in between there really. So again, what that means is no timing is pulled here and then it slowly ramps the timing out up to 15 degrees out by this green line here. So you can see the decimal doesn't show up here, which is what I was talking about when we were setting up the input for this. It does work. You can punch in the number and it will enter in between here and I can show you that. So we'll take this right here, which is retard A at one and a half seconds. I'll put two in. So there's two, there's three. If I type 2.5, it goes in between them. So it does allow you to enter a number in between. It will accept an actual decimal number. You just can't see it up here, which is why if I were to do this again, instead of using 0 to 5 as the numbers in my input, I would make it 0 to 500. That way I could see them here in numbers similar to the drive shaft. But it, again, that doesn't affect the function of this at all. It just makes it easier to look at the numbers in the table. So I went ahead and pulled up one of the logs and I wanted to show it to you on this table. Now you can see it got into it here, wrote it, and can actually see where it fell off here. And it came back and then it came under for the rest of the run. So we'll go look at that and see what that looked like in the data log now. But you can see that it works. You know, this is the G from the run. It came up, touched it, traction control pulled timing, put it back under, and then the rest of the run is just under it. This is the log from that run. This is just a real simplified view for everyone to see. I've got just the basics on there to show how it works. So we can see 
boost, RPM, and TPS. So he's all spooled up. He's already on the chip, ready to launch. Launch is here. RPM comes up. You can see the check mark here. The check mark also shows in the G and the TCG, my input, and then it continues on. Like we saw on the traction control setup screen where it came up and hit the G, that is this spot right here. So you can see my Excel G and my G meter TC follow the same curves. There's a small offset to them that we would correct in the future if we continue to use this, uh, but it does not stop it from functioning properly. As you can see, it follows the exact same curve. It's just offset by a small amount, so you need to make sure that in the table you are using the G meter TC and not your Excel G as you're adjusting the table. Let's pull up the ignition timing, and you can see that through here it's getting all crazy. And if we pull up drive shaft timing offset, we'll see that that is why. So all the way from here, all the way out to here where it finally dropped a little RPM, it was riding the G meter curve. So that's G meter based traction control and how I was able to do it in Holly EFI. If you have any questions about it, please leave a comment below or you can shoot me an email at highperfconsulting at gmail.com. I'd say please like and subscribe. It lets me know you enjoy these videos and that I should keep doing them.